Welcome. In this video, let's talk about performance metrics, specifically those that we can use to measure a company's liquidity. In your upcoming APM exam, you will be asked to assess how a company is managing its performance. Now, before we can talk about managing performance and before we can make recommendations on how a company can improve its performance, we've got to measure performance. Now, in this video, let's talk about a company's liquidity and let's talk about three things. Let's look at the importance of measuring liquidity. Then we'll review the metrics that you need to know for your upcoming APM exam. And finally, we'll look at how it will be examined. You've heard the expression, cash is king. People say this for a reason. More businesses fail from cash problems than from a lack of profits. It's cash that's the lifeblood of a company. Without enough cash or assets that can be quickly converted into cash, companies can't settle their obligations, they can't pay their employees or service their debt. And this means a higher risk of bankruptcy. Well, how can we measure if a company has enough cash? How can we measure a company's liquidity? Well, this is where ratio analysis comes in. We can measure financial performance with metrics that we calculate from a company's financial statements. But you know this, you've been performing ratio analysis for your entire ACCA exam history. We can measure profitability. Does a company's revenue exceed their costs? We can measure risk from several perspectives. We can measure financial risk. We can look at a company's debt versus their equity. We can look at a company's operational risk by looking at fixed costs as a percentage of total costs. We can look at the investor perspective. We can measure total shareholder return. We can measure earnings per share. We can measure efficiency. How efficient are a company's assets at delivering profits or revenues? We can look at project appraisal. We can look at NPV. We could look at IRR. We could look at modified IRR. But we are here to look at liquidity. Let's look at the metrics you're responsible for in APM. And you can find these right here in the study hub if you search liquidity. Let's review them. First ratio you are responsible for is the current ratio. This is a relative metric that measures our company's current assets, our inventory, our receivables, our cash and equivalents, over our current liabilities, our current obligations. By how much do our current assets exceed our current liabilities? Do we have enough cash on hand to settle our debts? The quick ratio, very similar to the current ratio. Here, we're applying the concept of prudence and we're going to eliminate inventory from the calculation. Inventory is the least liquid of our current assets. It may be obsolete, it may be damaged. So if we wanna have a prudent view of the company, let's eliminate inventory from the picture. We can also look at interest cover. Here, we would like to measure how many times a company can pay its interest from its operating profit or its profit before interest and tax. This will be especially important to lenders and they'll use this to measure a company's financial risk as well. Let's look at some additional ratios that were covered under PM and these are assumed knowledge. 
And these are working capital metrics, but they go hand in hand with liquidity. We could measure a company's inventory holding period or its inventory days, and this tells us how many days a company holds its inventory before that those finished goods leave the business as they're sold to customers. Now, the company's cash is tied up in its inventory, so fewer inventory holding days means higher liquidity. We can also look at a company's receivables collection period or receivable days. This looks at how many days it takes our credit customers to pay us to settle their accounts. Now, again, a longer receivables collection period means more cash is tied up in receivables, lower liquidity. So reducing receivable days improves a company's liquidity. We can also look at the payables payment period or the payable days. This is the opposite of receivable days. A higher payables payment period means higher liquidity because we're keeping cash in our pocket for a longer time. If your knowledge is a little fuzzy on those ratios, you can head over to the APM Get Ready module. Just type into your search engine, APM Get Ready module, and you can do two things. You can test your knowledge of the ratios, and then you can take a short online review course right here that goes over all of the ratios you need to know for your APM exam. Let's now look at how this topic can be examined in APM. The first way it can be examined is that you'll be asked to perform calculations. If we go to a past exam question, Resilos, here we're looking at a divisionalized manufacturing company that makes specialized pumps and if we have a look at exhibit four, we can see that we are being asked about bench marking. And if we look here at the bottom of the exhibit, we see the embedded requirement for the final part of your uh, report. You need to complete the benchmarking exercise and then comment on the metrics that were used and the results. If we go to the next exhibit, we can see the incomplete benchmarking report. And we see right here, inventory days is one of the five metrics that need to be calculated. They're not gonna tell you the formula, you're gonna need to know that. Then you'll go into the other exhibits, you'll find information from the company's financial statements, you'll do those calculations, in the spreadsheet, and then you will comment on your results. And look at this, we have the inventory days of the other two divisions, so you can compare your results to the other two divisions in your assessment of performance. The next way your knowledge of liquidity and liquidity metrics could be tested is through evaluation you could be asked, for example, to evaluate a performance report. And this is happening in the same exam question, Resilos. In this exam, you were asked to evaluate the performance report used by the board of directors in their annual performance assessment meeting. Here's that report right on the board. And to get passing marks on such a requirement, you're gonna to have to, for one, express judgment. Is the report aligned with the organization's mission? Will it help the directors assess the company's performance? 
And we'll do that from many perspectives. We can look at non-financial performance, but also financial performance. And right here, if we look at the report, we can see that it's quite heavy on financial performance. We see information, summarized information from the profit and loss statements of each division and then the company in total. While this might be helpful for measuring the company's profitability, you will earn marks by, by mentioning that this report does not cover the company's liquidity. Yes, the report gives us operating profit and finance costs, so we could calculate the interest cover, but the report should have that done for us. But there's nothing about current ratio, quick ratio, and we see no other view of working capital management. So we would earn credit by assessing the report in a negative light that this report is poor at measuring liquidity. And if you do that with rich examples, you'll also be earning business acumen marks. And if your answers make sense in the context of this company, and if you are providing good examples, you'll also be earning A and E, analysis and evaluation professional marks as well. The third way that liquidity measures can be tested in APM is through the demonstration of business acumen. This can come up in numerous ways. You might be asked to evaluate someone else's performance metrics. And you can assess these metrics. Are we looking at the company from a holistic point of view? Do we have financial metrics, non-financial metrics? And those financial metrics, are they looking at different dimensions of financial performance? Is profitability measured? Is risk measured? Is liquidity measured? You might be asked to recommend additional metrics to a performance report. Again, you'll draw upon the same knowledge. You could be asked to assess a balanced scorecard or a performance pyramid, in which case the financial perspective needs to be properly measured. And if we're going to do that, liquidity should be in the mix of KPIs. Ladies and gentlemen, I hope you found this video on liquidity indicators helpful. If you'd like more information, you can go into the ACCA study hub, find that search window, type liquidity, and you'll get more information on the topic. Good luck on your upcoming APM exam.